This is Nisreen from Nisreen's Art World. In this podcast, I will share my thoughts about different art forms such as films, books, paintings, performing art, etc. Hello, this is Nisreen. Welcome to the 19th episode of my podcast. It's lovely to speak to you again. The other day, I watched a thrilling Indian Hindi language film called Kill. The film, directed by Nikhil Nagesh Bhatt, was released in 2023. Watching such a gripping film for the first time in a while reminded me why contemporary Indian cinema holds a special place in my heart. If you've seen the film, you might wonder about my reaction. Aesthetically, Kill didn't seem very different from Western films like John Wick or East Asian ones like Train to Busan. The action scenes are extremely dark and gory, which is not typically Indian. If you've watched other commercial Indian films such as Atan, KGF, or Leo, you know they're generally much more family friendly. Kill also lacks the dancing scenes many associate with Indian cinema. So, why did my husband and I both get the same feeling while watching this movie? This is so Indian! I will list my three favorite characteristics of contemporary Indian cinema using Kill as an example. By contemporary, I mean films from 2010 onwards. This will prevent me from generalizing Indian films given their diversity. According to the 2001 Indian National Census, India has 120 major languages and 1,599 other languages, each with its own regional culture and films. What I'm sharing is a perspective of one person, a Japanese woman based in the United States. My view may come across as West centric, but that's not my intention. I simply have the most access to Western films. There won't be any spoilers. Let's dive in. 1. Family matters. In Indian films, family matters, even to the villains. What I loved about Kill. Is how it doesn't shy away from showing that even the so called bad guys love their families. They mourn every time they lose a family member. Of course, this doesn't stop you from rooting for the hero, Amrit, played by Laksha. The film ensures the villains are hate worthy in every possible way, especially the ultimate villain. Fanny, played by Raghav j u y a l They use slow motion and at least five flashbacks to remind you of the hero's motivation, saving his future wife and her family. This theme of rage climaxing in brutal revenge is seen in countless other Indian films. For example, the Telugu language film RRR, which I introduced in the first episode. Lines with this trope. Tamil language films like Master and Kaiti are also similar. Even in the Hollywood action film Monkey Man, the British Indian creator Dev Patel followed this narrative tradition. I truly appreciate how passionately these films speak to our emotions. This is something I miss in many current Hollywood action films. High cost sets and sophisticated special effects are cool, but they don't impress me unless I care about the characters and relate to them. In this aspect, American films targeted at minors, such as Kung Fu Panda or Wonka, do much better than those aimed at adults. 2. Boys do cry. I mentioned that even the villains mourn their losses. This means they cry, not just shedding a few tears, but 
full-on crying. The same goes for the invincible hero. He cries when he's sad, and even embraces his mate, expressing his love for his bro. This combination of alpha male behavior and emotional expressiveness is not unique to modern Indian films. However, if you're used to Western action films, you may find these expressive heroes refreshing or even progressive. According to one fan blog of the British action film James Bond, as of 2016, Mr. Bond has cried only twice throughout the entire series. The series started in 1962. I suppose English men don't have the stereotype of being stiff upper lip for no reason. Additionally, the expression of affection among male friends is less normalized in the macho cultural sphere of the West. This attitude towards male friendship spills over into outright homophobia. The term romance exists because male-male relationships get sexualized in a way that female-female ones don't. I am not suggesting that homophobia is less prevalent in India, given the current situation around LGBTQ rights in the country. It's just a different cultural norm regarding men's friendships. However, it is certainly great for men to be able to express their non-sexual affection for each other. Finally, three. Who run the world? Girls. This trend is particularly noticeable in many Indian films post-2010. Many films carry a clear feminist message, raging against sexism and both sexual and non-sexual violence and oppression against women. In the context of this feminist movement, I talked about the comedy films English of English and Queen in episode 4. In the Journal of International Women's Studies, Shital Yadav and Sumita Jha also point out the major impact of the Me Too movement on female representation in Indian films after the late 2000s. Even the violent action film Kill has this element. I particularly appreciated how female characters express their strength in a realistic way, both in their interactions with Amrit and their fighting scenes. This is not an easy thing to do in a gory film like this. I'd also love to express my appreciation for Tanya Maniktala, who played Amrit's fiancé, Tulika. Even though the primary part of this film is about Amrit and the villain Fanny being manly and doing manly things, the heroine's charm and acting skills are extremely important. If she couldn't convince us she deserved Amrit's blood and tears, we'd have lost interest. This is another aspect I love in many well-written Indian films. The heroines are expressive and likeable, not just gorgeous. What did you think? Do you agree with me on Indian cinema? Please let me know your thoughts. I'd be delighted if you wrote a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts or gave a rating on Spotify. It would be lovely if you share this episode on social media as well. And of course, you are more than welcome to let me know your thoughts through the contact form in the description. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye for now.